Okay, so Illustrator's awesome, but let's be honest, it can be really frustrating sometimes, especially if you're just getting started or coming from something like Photoshop. And over the last 20 years, I've learned a lot of tricks, tips, hacks, I guess you could say, that are going to make using Illustrator a lot easier and a lot faster. So I thought, hey, why not save you the hassle of going through what I went through? So here are 20 of my favorites. In Illustrator, you can align to a key object and a very quick way to choose what the key object is, is to select both or multiple objects and then simply click again on the object you want to be the key object. You can see it becomes highlighted and now I can use the align panel to align everything else to that key object. Okay, a more recent addition to Illustrator, you can see I've got a bunch of icons and a giant circle. What you can do is select absolutely everything and grab the new objects on path tool. Simply click it and then click on the target object that you would like all of the icons or graphics to orbit around. And as you can see, they're now on that path and I can even move them and rotate them all on that path as well. Hands down, the fastest way to copy your appearance effects from one object to another is to select the object with the appearance effects and go to the appearance panel. You can see I've got a zigzag. You might have loads here and you just grab this tiny little preview here and drag that onto your other object and then boom, those appearance effects are instantly applied. A while ago, Illustrator's star tool got a bit of an upgrade. So if we go and select the star tool, we can go and make a nice five pointed star. There we go. However, this is now a live shape. And if we click up here, we can adjust the number of points quickly and easily. And we can also click on these little control points here and we can adjust the radius of those points as well. Okay, this tool is very useful. So you can see I have a square and what I'm gonna do is go up to the pen tool, click and hold and hiding all the way at the bottom, we have the anchor point tool. What I can do with this is click along any point along a path and I can click and drag this out. So I could take a straight line and I could suddenly curve everything up. I could click at any point actually and I can kind of bend this in any sort of direction. But I think I'm going to grab it right in the middle so I get a nice half circle. And uh, there we go, I've made uh, a cloud. A very useful shortcut to creating a squircle is something I learned the other day actually. Simply create a circle, select it, and go to effect, down to warp, and then we're going to go to inflate. And we want to grab the slider here and hover around 50 to 100%, something like this. Now we can't actually rotate this around. It just kind of quivers and wibbles and wobbles. So what we need to do is expand this effect by going to object and expand appearance. Now we can rotate our squircle around 45 degrees. And there we go. We have a squircle. I know it's a bit weird. Circle, square, squircle, you can uh, see the logic. This is probably my most used shortcut in Illustrator, period, like forever. So I have a circle here, and let's say I want to generate some golden ratio circles from this. I'm gonna press S for the scale tool, return to bring up the window. Make sure you've got 100% in here. I'm gonna type forward slash for divide 1.618, which is the golden ratio. And I'm gonna click copy, so it creates a copy. And this is the magic. Press Command or Control D and it will repeat that transform. So if I do this multiple times, I now have lots of golden ratio adherent circles. Adherent, is that a word? I don't know. It is now. Okay, so this next one will massively speed up your workflow. You can see I have a lovely bright yellow star. Oh, that's nice. And I'm going to select it and we can press Shift X to swap the fill and the stroke around. Or we can press X to swap which one is selected, the fill or the stroke, or we can press forward slash and the active color, whether it's the fill or the stroke, will be set to none, or we can press D on the keyboard to reset this to the default white fill and black stroke. And I know that's a lot of shortcuts, but honestly, once you learn these, you'll be whizzing around Illustrator like a kangaroo on crack. Okay, another recent addition, as of, I think, maybe even this week, is down here, you can see that if I have a tool selected, we have a nice chunky status bar now, and it gives us a few tips. So if I press P for the pen tool, you can see it gives us some tips on how to use them. And if I switch to the scale tool or the rotate tool, we get some little tool tips down there, 
that tell us how to use that tool. And that's very useful because oftentimes a lot of tools in Illustrator do have this additional functionality and it will be years until you learn it. Whereas now it's just sat there at the bottom of the screen. Right, this took me a long time to realize you could do this. And that is that you can double click on many tools in Illustrator and it will bring up a panel with lots of related settings. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check these two options here because we will be using those a bit later on. But if you're not sure, just double click on a tool and see if it brings up a bunch of options that you didn't know were there. Right, so I have a spiral, but you can do this with any path or line that you draw in Illustrator. So I'm gonna select this. And from the stroke panel, I can go down here to profile and I have a bunch of presets for the width. So I could choose this one here and I could taper this off. And if you adjust the stroke profile, as you scale the stroke up or down, it maintains those properties. So I could also press Shift X, no, that's wrong, Shift W for the width tool and chunk up this end a little bit here. And you'll see on the right hand side, I now have a custom width profile. And I can also go back over here and I can even check this option here to round the cap off. So now I'd have lovely rounded ends at either end of my pass. Okay, so for this next one, if you have a design or a shape and you want to create like another version of this, either around the outside or on the inside, what you can do is select your object, go up to object, down to path, and then choose offset path. Give this a positive or a negative value, press return, and you've now got a copy of that shape with that offset applied. And this is great if you've got a complex design already and you want to add something like a border. Oh goodness, look at this twat. Okay, right, so we have a photo here. A really quick and easy way to crop images in Illustrator is to just grab any shape tool or draw a shape with the pen tool. I'm gonna draw a circle here and crop this like a profile photo. Get it in position and then make sure you have the image and the shape selected. And then you can go up to object and then all the way down to clipping mask. But you've got the keyboard shortcut there, Command or Control 7. So we can just press that. And there we go. The image is now cropped inside the shape. Okay, at some point you are accidentally going to click this tool. This is the perspective grid tool. Nobody cares for this. And what you'll do is you'll try and click the X here and nothing will happen. Because of course it won't. However, to get out of this tool and this mode, just press escape on the keyboard. Okay, so we have a sparkle. There isn't really a quick way to duplicate things in Illustrator. Well, no, that's not true. There is. You can hold down alt or option and drag to duplicate. But what if I want to duplicate in exactly the same place? Well, what you can do is press command or control C, command or control F, and then you basically duplicated that shape in exactly the same position. So no dedicated duplicate function, but that is the closest thing to it. Okay, so a really quick way to edit text in Illustrator is to grab the type tool with T on the keyboard and we're going to select the text. What I can do is press command or control shift and then use the left and right are the arrow keys, chevrons, <laughs> the pointy ones going in opposite directions and then we can make the text bigger or smaller very quickly and easily. Or what we can do is hold down alter option and use left and right on the keyboard to adjust the tracking. That's the spacing between all of the letters. Or we can press up and down to adjust the leading, which is the spacing between different lines. So if you do work with typography a lot, this is gonna save you a lot of time. So you don't have to keep going over to that panel on the right hand side. Okay, this next one has driven me absolutely crazy at times. So hopefully this is helpful. You can see I've got a lightning icon but I've got this weird thing over here. I don't know what is going on, but if I go into outline mode with command or control Y and zoom in a bit more, all the zoom, let's go in there. You can see we've got two different anchor points. We've got this weird problem going on. So I'm gonna grab this one over here, come out of outline mode, and now I've selected the anchor point. If I move this, you'll see what happens. You can see if it's not exactly on top of the other one, it just causes all sorts of corner related issues. So what we can do is we could drag these on top of each other and that fixes the corner. Or another very useful trick is you can select both of these anchor points and press command or control, alter option J, leave both checked. 
and this will pull both of those anchor points together so they sit in exactly the same position. And now if I zoom back out, you can see the corner is fixed. However, following on from that, we still have a problem. We have two anchor points occupying the same spot. And whilst it looks fine here, you'll find that when you work in Illustrator, this can cause problems. So ideally, we want to clean that up. The easiest way to do this is to deselect everything and with the main selection tool, select that shape with these duplicate anchor points. And then you want to open up the Pathfinder panel. Mine is hiding somewhere. There you are, gotcha. And all you want to do is click this option here once. Unite. Now it doesn't look like anything's changed, but if I grab that anchor point with the direct selection tool, you can see it's merged those two points that were on top of each other into a single point. Okay, when it comes to customizing text, it's very quick and easy to do. Uh, I've got some text here in Comic Sans. Comical, ha ha Dan, you're so funny. So what I'm gonna do is go to type, idiot, and then go down to create outlines. So this text is now no longer editable. It's just a bunch of shapes in Illustrator. And then I can go to the pencil tool Remember, we activated those two options earlier on. What we can do now, we've turned those options on, is I can click and drag over the lettering, and I can use this to reshape the text. So let's kind of turn that into some nice dripping text. And you could do this for all of the letters and very quickly and easily customize your text. And lastly, when it comes to creating wavy lines in Illustrator, please do not use the pencil tool and do this. Just absolutely 100% not. I mean, actually, to be fair, that isn't the worst one I've ever done. Or you could use the pen tool, but again, please know there is a better technique. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the line tool and we're just gonna press what we're gonna press. We're gonna click and hold is what we're gonna do. Press D to get that default black to white fill and stroke. And then we're gonna go to effect. We're gonna go to distort and transform then we're going to choose the zigzag. Let's bring the window in so we can actually see it. And then what we can do is adjust the size. We could have more ridges per segment to make it especially ziggity zaggity. Or you could make it smooth, depending on what you're going for. So let's play around with these settings. Something like this. When you're happy, click OK. Now this is still an effect applied to a path. So to edit the geometry further, what we need to do is go to Object and down to Expand Appearance. And now what I can do is I can use all of Illustrator's other tools like the Pen Tool, for example, and I can now interact with these zigzags and even go and edit them however I like. So you can see I've created whatever this wibbly wobbly shape is, or I can edit all of these individual points and use something like the Scale Tool to kind of play around with the height. Kind of like a, a swimming pool. There we go, it's a swimming pool or something. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed that. And if you did, I've got another one on screen somewhere. Not sure where I'm gonna put it. It could be there, it could be there. Who knows? I don't. So click on that and I'll see you in a sec.